All right, let's try this again. Hey, y'all. Welcome to the theater. Tonight is Artistic License, where we do a little bit of whatever I want. Tonight, we're going to be playing some Riven. We're going to do part two. Um, we did part one last week. We're going to be doing uh, part two tonight. We're going to try to finish it, but we might not. Um, uh, and if we don't finish it, then we'll finish it up next week. And then after we finish it, we will go ahead and do uh, some more Final Fantasy X optional bosses. I'm so sorry for all the banging around. Bri is trying to get comfortable. <laughs> Um, I fixed the settings that were making the encoding lag go crazy. I was trying to do like some little bit of a nicer, nicer settings for you guys. Oh, there you go. Koneko. Welcome in Koneko, by the way. Double first, since I had to restart the stream to fix those, but everything looks resolved now. Um, apparently I cannot do 1080p 60fps. I need a better computer for that, I suppose. OBS was telling me my computer could not, it could not hang. Internet was good. Hardware, computer hardware. <laughs> unhappy. <laughs> All right. So you guys know how we like to start these streams. We like to start them with doing a little personality quiz. And today our personality quiz is, boom, what kind of shark are you? All right. So I'm going to get the little linky for you guys. There you go. We're doing what kind of shark are you? As you guys remember, in Riven, um, they worship uh, this big like whale creature. That's like a, a, a source of awe and fear for the people of the Riven Age. So we're going to do this one. This is a quiz introduction. Okay, due to my ever-growing frustration with the most what shark are you tests online, I've decided to make my own quiz. Okay, cool. I wanted to make some of the questions kind of atypical besides the expected what water do you like, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, take it if you want. And if you like art, follow me on Twitter. Okay, so apparently Jig Jag is an artist on Twitter. If this is a good quiz, maybe you should go follow them. We'll see. Let's start. Do 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 to do. <laughs> exactly, Konecto. Baby shark. Do 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 to do. Okay. How's your social life? Non existent. I'm a lone wolf shark. <laughs> uh, not terribly active, but I'll see someone if I need something. I have a close circle. Oh, I love my handful of friends. The more the merrier. We're like a very fucked up family of over five people. Our numbers are ever growing and our hunger is insatiable. Men, women, children, no one is safe from our friend group. I don't know, honestly. Um, I don't know. I feel like here on the stream, we're like a, a small intimate friend group, you know, because I still can chat with everyone. So I think maybe a close circle. Okay, how do you feel about travel? Love it. Can't live without it. You see right now I'm traveling as I'm writing this. Um, I do love travel. I haven't really traveled very much since the start of the pandemic, but I hope to get back to it. Hey, other Karen, how's it going? We're doing a personality quiz. You should do it with us and see what kind of shark you are. Um, yeah, I love traveling. I love traveling. Uh, which of these do you like better? Sand. Oh, sand. I love sand. Laying on sand is so nice. <laughs> I'm a big fan of rocks personally. I like those kind of structures. Yeah, big rock guy over here. That's me. Don't even get me started on the classic ocean. Oh my God. Whoa, dude. It's literally crazy. I love it. Deep. The deep. Ooh, the deep. I love the ocean, actually. I love the ocean, not the sand. I don't, I don't like the beach. I love the ocean. Hi, Bertles. Welcome in. How's it going? Gosh, when was the last time I saw you, friend? It's been a second. How are you? Are you athletic? Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. I love sports. I'm a big sports guy. I'm not opposed to it, but I'm not crazy about it. Hell no. I am not athletic. I am not. Um, that would be cool, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> do you consider yourself aggressive towards others? I'll cut a bitch for a cheese stick. If it's a French fry, do not steal my French fries off my plate. I'm just saying like, that's not a thing you should do. Um, only if someone bothers me, honestly, not at all. I'm pretty chill. Sometimes I overreact. Honestly, like only if someone bothers me, like I'm pretty chill most of the time. Um, but like, I don't let people walk on me. So I'll be aggressive if I got to. Do you have dental problems? <laughs> Come on, England. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's racist against British. Gosh. Um, maybe my teeth are weird. Nope, I'm all good. Screw the rest of you. I have no teeth. A little bit. Um, when my wisdom teeth came in on the bottom, it like squished all my teeth together. And even after they took them out, it's like I've still got this like snaggle tooth like down here. And they're a little messed up down there because of that. So a little bit weird. I just don't care that much. <laughs> when they fall out, I guess I'll get dentures. It's fine. <laughs> Um, are you scary? Not at all. I'm just a guy. I'm an average amount of scary, I think. People seem to think I am. I'm an eldritch beast. I strike fear into the hearts of all who behold me. I have definitely been told that I'm intimidating 
and scary, but I don't think it's like abnormal. I think I'm just told that I'm scary in the sense of like a lot of peeps do not like a woman who is confident and outspoken. So I think I think I'm like a normal amount of scary. <laughs> I give some of my food, they mean a freaking lot to me unless I'm cooking specifically for me and that person. Oh, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I still have all my wisdom teeth. I never had issues with them. Lucky they did not fit in my mouth. I had to get them out. Like I had like permanent marks in the back of my cheeks because they were just so, um, they so didn't fit that I was like basically biting my back of my cheeks like all the time. The dentist even commented on it. They were like, oh my gosh, um, you've destroyed the back of your mouth. Let's get these out. I was like, yes, yes, yes. (laughs) Um, Yeah, your your dentist comments. I bet, I bet. Um, I bet they do. Oh, you have yours too. Okay. Refuse to grow in. Oh, so they're just stuck in your gums. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. Koneko. I think if I was your dentist, I'd commented on it all the time too. Um, that's crazy. Wisdom teeth are fun. You guys, <laughs> uh, let's get that grum pig. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Mine started growing in fairly early too. I want to say I was in high school, so I wasn't as young as 12, but I was still definitely like fairly young. Like I want to say like freshman or sophomore or something, but I wanted to get them taken out all at once. So like these top ones grew in and I didn't get them taken out for a while until the bottom ones started growing. Um, a person you kind of know reaches over and eats your chips. What do you do? Oh God, another food question. You let them to make them go away. Just kind of sit there confused, offer more chips, jokes on you. I don't know. (laughs) I know anyone at all ever. Um, I guess it really depends on who it is. If I'm comfortable with them, like you get the wrath. If I like actually like you, then I will defend my chips. If I don't like you, then honestly, like I don't know if it's worth it to argue with you because I can be kind of conflict diverse in that way if I don't really care about you. So most of the time confused, I would say. Mine exists, but they never came out. Yeah. So they're like in your gums. That's so funny. Um, pick an image you're rocking with. Okay. How is Key always posting on Instagram? What about the war? What? I got a oh, so supposed to say pleasant oh pleasant state. I got a whole group chat of friends in every city going to steal your life piece by piece. We steal in your laptop. We about to steal. What the heck? These are so crazy. Um, damn girl, we see them. I guess this one. I don't understand these. I don't understand these. I'm sorry. And maybe this is like a, a I'm too old, too millennial, whatever. Pick a song you resonate with. Let's see if I know any of these songs or if a Zoomer made this. <laughs> uh man eater goodbye stranger banished hyperactive um freak on a leash oh i know that song um we stand united gray matter by ongo but i know that song something in the way nirvana yes fine by lemon drop okay i know a decent number of these songs um oh but there's an i don't know any of these songs often oh that's good <laughs> congrats other karen you got a pokemon um i actually really like this song man eater by hollow notes and i think that uh that fits. There is a song called Man Eater by Nelly Furtado as well. Yes. Man Eater. How do you feel about sunshine? I love it so much I can't get enough. It's okay. I'm not crazy about it. My auntie sun. Never seen it. I like the sun, but I'm incredibly pale. So I can only do so much sun before it turns into sunburn. I only know two off by heart. That's how I usually am on the song ones. Like, I mean, I listen to a lot of music, but a lot of these are made by kids, young kids. And so they're posting like all the current stuff and I just don't listen to enough current music. You know, if it's good, I will, but I skip a lot of the suggested tracks on Spotify and things like that. Um, A diver comes over to you. What do you do? Who, what is this guy? I have questions. We do not care. Just don't bother me. Oh my God. Hi, friend. Lamo. That would never happen to me. I don't care. So long as they're not bothering me, they can hang around. It's fine. Describe yourself. Oh, this one's long. Patrick Bateman voice. I'm sleep. Oh no. Um, I'm efficient. Oh God, go away. Um, oh, I'm a worm. I'm a wormy worm. Okay. Men will not leave me alone. I'm very smart, very powerful, very awe-inspiring. You can bet your ass I am 55, 51% as company. Whoa. Shark boss. I'm like a tank. I'm pretty sturdy. Okay, not that one. People really like me and I'm very photogenic. I attract people who are very different from me and I mind my own business. I like sh- shoveling schlop in my mouth. Actually, I kind of do vibe with that. People think I'm intimidating, but once they get to know me, I'm a gentle giant. I keep messing. I'm not a giant. I'm very angry all the time. And Nope. Um, I like sleeping and being relaxed. I'm a night owl. No, um, I'm also very sleek and very fast, but I don't use my energy very often. Yes, I have potential. Um, 
but I don't use it. Yes, I, yet I still succeed. This is kind of true, honestly. But I don't like the hashtag Sigma hashtag grow your business hashtag. That like the it's too much. That's too much. Um, you may laugh at my appearance, but if you mess with me and my gang of a hundred guys who look exactly like me, we'll pull up and burn down your house. Wow. <laughs> I like fresh water and mangroves and lovely roots and trees and creatures. I'm very different, but in a silly and fun way. I stay in my little group of people like myself. Actually, I super vibe with that. I'm a little dude, but the government loves me. Um, no. My face is not stunning, but I'm quite relaxed. I do little swims and I don't use much energy. I'm a curious guy. I let, there's so, so many of these three. Oh my God, it's Nerdy Noodle, you guys. It's Nerdy. What the heck in heck? Koneko, I see you got um, poor Jackson Shark. We're going to read that in a second. I showed the results of my Discord because the image is just absolute baby. Oh, good. I'll have to look at it, Koneko. What the heck? You guys. Okay. Nerdy Noodle has the funnest um, streams, and uh, she has good nudes all the time. So here we go. We're going to do a shout out for Nerdy Noodle. There we go. Pretty. I'm just going to read these silently. Bay, I love you too. Dude. No. No. <laughs> no way. This one, I perfect just no the way I am. Way. Nothing is wrong with me. Oh, that album cover. So I can't wait to use that. That one. Gotta go with Flood by That's They Might Be Giants. Guess I'm the first one here. I like that. So there we go. Go follow Nerdy Noodle for a uh, good time. A guy breaks into your house, and when you get home, he's still there. He's a lot bigger than you and seems pretty metal. What do you do? I backflip over my dining room table. Do a, Oh, no, this is not. That one's not happening. I pull up my brass knuckles from my pocket and just go on it. Wow. Oh, you're welcome. No problem. Um, I grab a plant pot from outside and use it as a battering ram in order to knock the criminal to the ground. That's a good idea. I walk in, look around, and walk right back out and go ask my neighbor for help. That's probably closer to reality. <laughs> this would never happen because I have a tripwire that launches poison darts connected to my front door. Rookie mistake. Whoa. I text my group chat of 100 guys, and minutes later, we all have the house surrounded, ready to kill. <sighs> Impossible. I am huge and would simply intimidate him into leaving. I throw sand in his eyes and escape before running, returning later with the authorities. <laughs> it's like, pocket sand. <laughs> I would show him horrors beyond his comprehension and I would destroy his psyche. I drop to the floor and wiggle around to distract him long enough for the worm to arrive. Yeah, I'm going to leave and go find the neighbor for help. Oh, we're picking another image. I don't understand these images. This per I don't understand. Um, sorry for being so inactive for the past few months, guys. I was falsely accused of murder. Oh. This horror is beyond the comprehension of mortal man. I like this. You know, people try to insult me under a tweet with over 100 likes in under five minutes. Please sit down. Know your place. I could ruin you. I want this to be me someday. What does Pete Savins Davidson have that I don't have? Can I answer? Uh, maybe if I just walk fast as fuck. Yeah, it thumbs up. <laughs> and it'll whoosh. Never again with these motherfuckers. Hey, it's your Uber driver. I'm outside in the Corvette. It's one of something, a big number, made in 2007. What? Okay. Anyway, we're going with this one because that's vibes someday. Okay, we don't do this. I don't do the text ones. My result is Lemon Shark. What? I'm a Liz Lemon Shark. You're yellow. You stay in fresh water, and personally, you're one of my favorites. What? You just kind of relax and are usually hanging out on the seabed foraging for food. You take your time and let others do the work, and I respect it. That's true, okay? Everybody remember, in this house, we act our wage. We don't do tasks that aren't assigned to us, okay? Um, yes, fun fact, you have a horizontal band in your retina that helps you see fine detail and color. Not really a big picture person. Okay, I mean, I'm kind of a big picture person, but whatever, like, this is cute. Okay, let's go back and look at Koneko's. Poor Jackson Shark. Aren't you just a silly little guy? Oh, I love it. You're peaceful. There are no attacks on humans from you. You relax with a few friends and you know in your spare time. You actually have little spines on your dorsal fin that are poisonous. The Australian government loves you and isn't that nice. Yeah, that is nice. You're a night owl and you like to cruise along the sand looking for crustaceans and mollusks. You like that crunch. Koneko, that is so you. Like how you're always here on the Thursday streams even though you're over in Europe. Um, craziness. Okay. 
By the way, if you guys were not here at the beginning when I shared the link, I'm just going to share it again. If anybody else wants to go do the uh, personality quiz, you totes can. And you should tell me what you got if you go do it. Okay. All right, you guys. It's time for the game. It's time for the game. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. There we go. Okay, you guys. So last time we made many notes. Okay, actually, let's do this. Let's go back to the webcam. We made many notes. Remember, we know one through five with all of our little an and animals. Okay. We um, saw this picture. Okay. We drew these, these boxes. Okay. Because remember, the rules of Miss Games is you take notes. And we learned how to count in Denis, okay? These are the Denis numbers, 1 through 25. We learned how to count them. Boop, boop. Okay. Let's go back to our animal page. Okay. Where's my pencil? Make sure I brought a pencil in here. I have a pencil. Okay. Why autofocus? Don't get, get off of that. Get on me. There we go. Thank you. All right. Let's go where you guys can see. Let's go to start a saved game. And um, yes, we want to load a saved game. We're gonna load the stream game. Load. All right, so here we are. We are on Crater Island. We're back on Crater Island, you remember this. Okay, um, we're gonna go down to the middle of the lake like we did before. So remember we came down here and we flipped it to this guy right here. So we're gonna turn it back to the middle pipe. And just like um, I told you guys before when we played this, like I have practiced um, and taken notes and things like that. So um, this is not a blind playthrough. <laughs> Riven is a very hard game, you guys. Okay, I, I don't think I could do it from memory. I am not that smart. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna turn that. Um, and then we're gonna go up to this building right here. And we're gonna come around and we're gonna do some fun stuff with all this stuff right here. So I'm just looking at the notes that I took from my practicing. Um, okay, so we need to flip this switch to raise the floor up. You can see you can see in here it's like bubbles, boiling bubbles. So we wanna raise that floor up. It's doing that. All right. <clears throat> we wanna turn this valve we saw first to go over to this side. And that is going to um, drain the water out, I think. Yeah, that's going to drain the water. Oh, no, that's raising that. Okay, so now the floor is raised since we did both of those things. Um, let's see. And now I think we want to turn this crank so that the pipe goes out. And we want to turn this because we need to shut off the boiler so it's not boiling. Okay, so now we did that, and then I think we flip this back the other way. Yes, and then it drains. All right, guess what, you guys? Now we can get inside this building. Okay, so we're going to walk back around, and we can go in. If we tried to go in before, it's full of boiling water, so we cannot go in. But now we can, because it's not full of boiling water. Okay, so we're going to go into the boiling room, and we're going to go down the hole. I'm clicking a bunch of times to get to where it's light again. Okay, now this is a little confusing. Um, a lot of people get stuck here. I'm sure I got stuck here as a child. I don't remember, but look, you can, you can look down. Oh, and then you can climb off this ledge. Oh, but it's like the game doesn't really signal that to you very well. This is a, a spot that's like not super um, well documented. OK. So. We can go only this way. OK. And we go around here and there's another door. OK, but first we have to open this hatch. Okay, so let's see. I'm just looking at my notes. Yeah, and then we have to go down through it. Crater Island is so cool. Okay, now what we have to do is we need to get power 
to that area we just were. So instead of having the power go here, we're gonna turn it back to having the power go where it originally was. Okay, now we can go back around and go up, back where we were. Okay, now we can actually go in here and do stuff. Oh, another dark room. Riven is so atmospheric, you guys. It's really beautiful. Okay. We're going to proceed down this little windy path. And there is this fan up here that is annoying and loud. And then there's this guy. Oh, what is this? It's a little trap. And we got some food we can put on the trap. And then trap go down the hole. on Lee. Okay. So trap go down the hole. Now you can pull the trap back up here, but literally nothing's going to have changed. But there is this kind of like something going off in the distance this way. Interesting. The fact that the power is so inefficient makes me giggle like these people could never work in two places at the same time because there's never power in more than one place at a time. Koneko, you're right. <laughs> it is very inefficient. It is very inefficient, um, which probably drives Gen crazy because he's a really super efficient guy. Okay, so now we go back out here, and this next part of the puzzle is very annoying. But here's what you do. Do not go back outside. We close the door. You remember from the first Mist game? You can't make the elevator work unless you close the door. In, in Mist, you have to close the door behind you, okay? You, you have to close the door behind you. That's just how it is. <laughs> I wonder if it's a method to keep control though like these people depend on whoever's in charge of that power that's true they do sort of depend on Gen they do sort of depend on Gen remember that game we played where you drop drop the thing down and then the whale eats you I mean he did some fucked up stuff to those people okay so we close the door behind this um, the left path so we're going to take the left path first I think Um, yes. Okay. We're going to go down the left path. Left path. Okay. Oh, we've got another spinning dome. Okay. Wow. Um, now, just in case you were not paying attention before and want to make sure you really understand, you're supposed to close the door behind you. Because, look, there's another secret door if we close the door. Just like a second ago. Wow. Okay, and we've got this same, like, gold thingy. So where's the gold? Oh, no, I want to mash the button. I'm going to just mash the button until it goes. There we go. Okay, so it's another one of the symbols. We've got this eye that goes like this. Okay. I wrote that on our little notes over there. Okay, so that's what Crater Island has. And if you come around, I bet this is gonna be the same thing we saw before. Yes, it is. There's a book in there and there's little, there's some fun slidey puzzles that we don't know the answer to. Okay, so once again, we have been rewarded for our efforts with absolutely nothing. Riven loves to do this. It loves the Antissa patient. All right, let's go back up. We're going to go through the other door, and you can see this kind of like goes around here. And then you can see this is a locked door. We cannot get through this. Okay? It's locked. So we can keep going. And we have this long ass bridge. This bridge in particular is, um, <laughs> there's no reason to close that other door, Koneko. But I know what you mean. We should have. Okay, we go back. We go back. We close. We got to close the door behind us. Come here. Can we close that door? Oh, we can't close that door. <laughs> the game doesn't let me. Oh my gosh. I did not mean to open you. <laughs> okay, but that, that bridge, let's go back to it. Um, so Riven has never been, uh, recreated in like a fully 3D rendered situation. Um, and part of the reason is because with a point and click, you can make these like long ass bridges 
And this is one of the long ass bridges in the game. If you actually like rendered this in, in like a 3D space and had the player walk across, it would take for frickin' ever. And so that's one of the reasons that Riven has never been rendered in 3D the way that Mist has. Okay, so we lower the stairs. Now, if we had not made the power go to the right place before we came back here, those stairs would not have lowered, but they, they did, so, okay. And oh, look, we're back on the catwalk. On the catwalk, we can do our little turn on the catwalk. Okay, um, now let's go back around. We're trying to get to the beetle room, which I think, is that? No, that's not right. What did I just see? Oh, there's this dot. There we go. Now we fill that gap. Yay! <clears throat> All right. That is what I was supposed to do. Okay, then we keep going. And oh, what's this? We're back at the beetle room. Oh my gosh. What the heck? It's okay, we're back to Temple Island. All right, so let's push the button. I think I have to push this button twice. That's what I wrote in my notes. Let's see if, if I took good, good notes or if I'm supposed to push it more times. Remember, this is an audio only cutscene. You cannot skip audio only cutscenes. Um, yeah, okay, this isn't right. Okay. I think I'm supposed to do it. Flip the switch to get to the, yeah, push the button three. Oh no, three times. My notes say three times. You gotta reboot it three times, you guys. Did you reboot it three times? Yeah, yeah, I rebooted it three times. Who knows what that's from? That is ancient internet video. Yeah, and then we go through to this side, and then we do it twice, and then we can go to the gold dome. <clears throat> turn, 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 turn. We love spinning. Just keep spinning, just keep spinning. Spin, spin. You spin me right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby, right round, round, round. I feel like these cutscenes are like really loud and you'll probably can't hear me over them. Is that what's happening? I don't know. It feels like it feels like the grinding sound is really loud. Okay. So here we go. We're back here. Um, I think I didn't do something right. Because I was supposed to do 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 do. Yeah, I messed up. I messed up somewhere. It's loud when it starts. Okay, got it. So it's just that very beginning bit. Okay, we gotta we gotta go back. Um, I messed up. Okay, let's skip cutscenes since I made a mistake. Here. Okay, let's go back to here. There was something over here that I missed. Okay, I filled in the. Okay. Flip the switch. Okay. There was a switch over here that I was supposed to flip. Is it this guy? No, because I have to flip that to get into that. It's not that. Okay, there's another switch over here somewhere. Because I wrote in my notes, flip the switch by the entrance door. Where the heck are you? Is it this? No, but we can do this. Turn the wheel, okay. I think it's because I didn't go all the way over here. Yes, this was the switch. I skipped a step, you guys, I'm sorry. And then we raise it.
that's what we want. Okay, so now it's going up. Now we can go back around to the beetle room. Which we already, yeah, filled the gap. Okay. Alrighty, now. Okay, now we can go up. All right, so at the top of the gold dome, this is called the fire marble puzzle. All right, this is one of the most difficult fucking puzzles in this whole stupid game. So let me teach you about it. Now, remember all these beautiful symbols that we drew with the little squares everywhere. What does this look like? This looks like a grid of those squares and you can see there's kind of dark lines, all right? So graph paper is good for this. I don't have graph paper, so we're gonna wing it. Okay, so we've got a singular square in the top left and then we've got one that's kind of like two and then it's the three and then it's like, these are dark. I'm just drawing. So, okay, so I've drawn those first two. You can see like um, the dark lines, right? It is mastermind extreme mode. I mean, okay, but the payoff is worth it. I wouldn't be showing you guys this game if the payoff wasn't worth it, okay? So I promise, like the anticipation, the anticipation is totes worth it. Okay, so then this other one is like four. I mean, because this game is actually fucking genius. Like, like, that's not even, I'm not even exaggerating. Like, it's like the smartest game in the world. I used to be a bus driver, but I had to quit. I was fed up with people talking behind my back. My God, Dragon Side. I have missed your puns, friend. Where the heck and heck have you been? It's been months. What have you been up to? How's the world treating you? I have missed you so, so much. Truly. What have you been doing? You have to catch me up. Okay, and then I draw the big one. Okay, so we've got, i make these dark lines really dark. Okay, so we've got these, this grid of these five different shapes, okay? Been around, I moved, I got a new job. I moved too, you like my new background? I hope you uh, like where you moved to. I really like where I moved to. Um, tell me about the new job as much as, as much as you want to, of course. Do not, you don't need to dox yourself or nothing. But I would love to hear about it. Okay, so we've got that picture. Um, so this is a fire marble puzzle. Um, and uh, we do not have the information to solve it yet. All we know is we've got these six colors and we've got these one, two, three, four, Five areas. Very interesting. Lots of wonderful windows. Yes. Okay, so now we got to go back. So we're going to go back. Um, and we're going to rotate the room again. Three times. Got to reboot three times. I'm working full-time IT help desk working to go into cybersecurity. <gasps> oh! Dragon, you know what? I loved my help desk job back when I had it. If it if I was in a position where I could get it to pay more, I would have kept that job. It was good. Um, Cybersecurity is really high tech, really interesting. New place and apartment downtown has an industrial vibe. I love that for you. Okay, so we're backtracking, right? So we're backtracking back here and uh, we're going back to our catwalk so we can do our little turn on the catwalk. Okay, so we're going to go left on the catwalk. And go to where we flipped those two steam pipes. Wait, no, that's a little bit farther. Not there. I turned too early. We go all the way down here. Okay, this is back where we flipped those two, two steam pipes in part one. So we're going to head over here. And it's hard to see, but there's a little button here at this elevator. Okay, so we're going to go down the elevator. I want to strangle some super users some days. Boy, I know what you mean. I am a super user. IT wants to strangle me because I used to do their job before. So like, I know enough to be dangerous, but I don't really know. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm that user. I'm very annoying. Very annoying. Okay, so look. Oh, another gold dome. 
What do we do with gold domes? We press the button. Where's the gold symbol? Okay, this one is just a circle with a dot. Circle, circle, dot, dot. Now we got our kitty shot. Okay. Very interesting. So the circle dot is on Temple Island, the circle with the line was on Crater Island, and the circle where it kind of looked like an eye that we saw at first was on Jungle Island. Okay, and it's the same thing. We got a book in here. We got a slidey puzzle that we can't do yet. I had a director that didn't want to use a headset because of anxiety about hearing loss, but complained about her mic. Quality with the built-in mic. Built-in mics are garbage. Yes, that's true. I have some executives that also hate to use their lapels when they talk because they're like, I talk so loud anyway, but I'm like, friend, the people on Zoom cannot hear you. So you have to use it. If it bothers you that much, fire me. Okay, let's catch this mail tank. There we go. What? I don't have any great balls either. I know I have some ultra balls. Okay. Um, all right. I'm sorry if you can hear the dog crying a lot. She is um, really struggling right now. Um, we are, we've got an appointment for her on tomorrow to talk um, to the vets. She is, she's having a lot of trouble. Um, she is a lot of old people trouble. She's kind of like nearing end of life kind of situation, you know? Oh gosh. Um, and she cries a lot and we don't know why. So we're going to talk to the vet tomorrow and see what else we can do. But the dog, she's like, I told you guys before, she's like between 15 and 18 years old. So I don't, I don't know. I might have some sad news soon. Um, but we'll see. Tomorrow. The vet's going to tell, talk to us about it tomorrow. And make a recommendation. I hope, anyway. I hope they'll help us figure out what's right. Okay, so we're going back around. We're trying to get back to Crater Island, which I think should just be if we go all the freaking way back. Uh, yes, way back. Yeah, okay. See, like, how freaking long this bridge is? It's, like, ridiculous. There you go. Yeah, okay. Imagine if we had to, like, actually walk that. You know what I mean? Okay. So. All right. So this is still locked. There's a switch. There we go. So we need to flip this switch. And we need to go check on our trap. So we came back here to check on our trap, basically. So we flip the switch on our way, but we really are coming back here to check on our trap. Let's see what we got. Okay, listen closely, you guys. We heard this sound before. Okay? We heard this sound before. This was that chirp sound from the very first ball. Okay? The frog. It's a frog. Remember we saw the frog shadow? And this was the sound that the ball made, that very first one. Okay? So, that is helpful. Now, since we did that switch, the vent has stopped, so we can climb up the vent. So let's go there and see what's here. Oh, what is this? Where are we? Ah, <gasps> it's that door. We're on the other side of the locked door, you guys. We got in. Okay, we made it. Now, we are in Gen's laboratory. This is Gen, Atris's dad, who rules the area. And guess what? Just like all good Denis, Gen keeps a journal. Let's read it. 
The latest ink formulation has proven a failure. Even when writing in my most promising books, I obtain only the barest glimmer of a connection. It is frustrating to expend so much effort creating a blank book, only to end up destroying it when it doesn't work. There are days when the lab is uncomfortably warm for the flames of all of these failed attempts. The further I refine each element, the formalities of the inks and papers, the physical dimensions of the book, the more I realize that the list of potential combinations is nearly infinite. It, it is during moments like this that I despair. Without access to the Denis, my long-term goals may never be accomplished. Nevertheless, there are avenues of research which remain to be explored. I am discontinuing regular observations of the stars beneath the fissure. Although I've been able to track the dark, cloud-like formations that migrate through the star field and have proven that their paths are cyclical, without proper instrumentation, it is pointless to continue. My general theory concerning the nature of the fissure has remained unaltered since it first appeared. It seems that the fabric of the age has been breached in a way that permits matter to be hospitably exchanged between the two discrete but overlapping spaces. Much like a link, but the apparent physical contradictions surrounding this juncture defy logical reason. The great columns of wind that were formed when the fissure first appeared suggest a vacuum as one might expect in space, yet my early experimentations revealed the presence of a breathable atmosphere. Obviously, because we survived going through the fissure, remember that? In mist. Um, that Atris and Catherine threw themselves into the void is further evidence that it might be safe to travel, but without knowing its true nature, I cannot take the risk myself. Okay, again, is very risk averse. All right. It is also difficult to say what would happen if I were to reopen it after so long, but it is likely that the results would be catastrophic, given the changes that have occurred in this age since that time. So what he's talking about is, if you remember from Atris's writings, Riven used to be one island, and it's kind of the seismic activity has broken it apart, which is why we have to take roller coasters and, and long bridge catwalks to go between them. Maintenance on the steam vent caps completed. I am extremely pleased with the continued success of this system. I believe the construction to, ha to have been true to the Denis designs of my memory, another example of the su superiority of the Denis technology. It is ironic that Atris and Catherine unwittingly provide me with such a convenient source of power. So this is explaining some of the steam power that you see on this island. As with many of my views over the years, my thoughts regarding the origin of the fissure have changed. I've recently begun to wonder whether it was actually an unexpected byproduct of the changes Catherine and Atris wrote into this age during their escape. Certainly, by casting their linking book into the void, they trapped me here quite effectively, but I do not believe that Atris intended the book to be lost in the meantime. Much better to destroy it than to risk the possibility of it falling into unknown hands. Also, had they forgiven the uh, had they forever the creation of the fisher, they would surely have thought that the vacuum it created would eventually consume the atmosphere of the planet, a fate which Catherine undoubtedly would have deemed unacceptable. Catherine is incredibly sympathetic to the uh, denizens of Riven uh, for her homeworld. Okay. If I had not been there to supervise the construction of the, of the seal, this would most certainly what would have happened. But for the villagers, we're far too frightened to even approach the vortex without my urging. I held on to the belief that it is an unintended consequence of the writing for another reason as well. I prefer to think that my son had meant for this age to be merely a prison for me rather than a death sentence. Okay. The construction of the imagers has proceeded without fault. It is interesting to see how easily I've been able to adapt the Denis technology to mimic that of the Amand. The same way the similarities between the two cultures is striking. I think this is how you say, I think you say Ahmad. I'm not really sure. And as you guys can tell, I'm not very good at reading script. <laughs> I'm going a little slow. I wonder if perhaps there had been communication on the commerce between the two cultures in earlier times. Maybe Keta's people were even descendants of the Dini. It pleases me to think so. So Yen is very obsessed with his Dini heritage, with the, the Dini culture, and all of the things Dini. Um, he longs very deeply to be back in Dini with Dini people. He feels very isolated. So this thought that maybe the denizens of Riven are somehow 
connected genetically or or um, economically with a, a, the ancient Dene that gives him a lot of comfort. Um, note, it's possible that if I was somehow able to supply the books with a power source of sufficient magnitude, I could suppress the variance enough to facilitate a solid link. It is doubtful that the geothermal cap generators could provide such an enormous surge. Perhaps I could adapt the fire marbles. We saw the fire marbles. We saw that. I have been cataloging the natural elements of this age for nearly 30 years now, yet still I continue to find evidence of the Denis preoccupation with five. The Denis love five. This is a big clue. So if you weren't understanding the Denis numbering system before, this is supposed to help you understand it by saying five, because you can see you do like little rotations for each of those. We talked about that last time, each of the numbers. Yet I still, okay, no, I read that. Okay, as a boy, it was very clear to me that the number five had a special significance to the Denis society, from the ancient heraldic emblems of the ruling elite to the humble homes of the commoners. It was ubiquitous. His presence here is obviously a direct reflection of the minds that designed the texts that I used to compose this age. Further proof that through their art, the Denis masters were indeed creating the marvelous worlds they wrote and not, as many have mistakenly thought, merely building links to pre-existing worlds. So this is a big difference in the way that Atris's ego functions versus Gen's ego. Atris believes that he is building links to worlds that already exist so that um, they can be connected to. Gen believes he is actually creating the worlds that the Denis write about, and so like he is their god in a sense. He is a, he is a creator god of sorts. And so are other Denis that know how to do the art. While most of my constructions have been banned on Den based on, or sorry, while most of my constructions have been based on Denis designs, I see now that the ones that I have imbued with the power of the five are clearly the most beautiful, the most perfect, and I believe the most structurally sound. Okay, five is very important. Five, five dollar foot long. Okay, I am still attempting to determine how the Denis color symbology reflects this superior design principle. Although I soup Although superficially it is based on a six color system, I am convinced that there has to be a deeper connection to five. I will continue to investigate. So he's lamenting that there's six colors instead of five colors. Um, as you saw in the fire marble puzzle, there were six colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Random thought today, the Mist series would be hilarious to cross over with Kingdom Hearts. Both are incredibly convoluted in how they approach their worlds. Oh my God. I think Kingdom Hearts has um, missed beat on that. Uh, Mist's world building is a little bit more logical. Um, although incredibly convoluted as well. Okay, so I'm gonna write down the order of these little eyeballs that he's got here. Okay, he's got one like this, one like this, um, one, got one like this, got a dot one, got one like this, and he's got one like this. Okay, so I just wrote down, I just wrote down this eyeball order right here. Okay, I finally made a breakthrough. I have succeeded in modifying the five marbles to generate enough power to hold the descriptive linking book in a stable matrix. I have linked to a new world. Okay, all right, so we got to solve the fire marble puzzle. It is a harsh and desolate age, but it is nonetheless well suited for my purpose. And I have designated to call it my, this, this number is 223, I think, or 233. Just trust me. <laughs> if you understand the Denis numbers, it makes sense. But yes, um, by studying it closely, I believe I will eventually be able to create a more appropriate. Oop, I did not mean to click there. Um, let's get to that page we were on. There we go. Okay. It landed me that same page. Okay. Appropriate age for us to settle on. For now, I will build an office and set up my living quarters there. And in order that I may conduct my experiments in safety without distraction. So why is Gen not in his lab? Because he is here on this, in this age instead. Gen likes to number his ages. He does not give them names. Remember, he believes he's creating them. Um, you can see these doubled mountains in this kind of like pointy thing. Okay. Um, Kingdom Hearts is logical, except a few elements that don't get brought up outside of when it's convenient. Yes, I feel that's true. To be honest, the only consistency, inconsistency on how time flows differently between worlds thing that only gets brought up like twice. Yeah. And I feel like that's more just like, oops, we don't want to rewrite a bunch of stuff. So time flows differently. Problem solved. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, why would you bother? 
I must admit that I am proud of my work to think that in such primitive conditions, I have accomplished in 29 years what it took the original Denis centuries to achieve. Note, repair outer wear for work on this world. The goggles may need to be redesigned altogether. Okay, interesting. Um, I have begun the construction on a series of link sites for each island that will reconnect Riven with my new office on 233 or whatever that number is. 223, it's something like that. The Survey Guild has finally completed the site location for each island according to my exact specifications. An installation of the domes is underway at last. He's talking about he's using the Riven denizens uh, as labor. Because remember, he's their god. He can just tell them to please do work for him. Work on the central power source got off to a bit of a bad start, I am afraid. But the pack has picked up considerably since then, and I anticipate no further delays. I'm looking forward to finally having a civilized mode of transportation. Okay. Um, yeah, and then they immediately forget that time flows differently. Yes. <laughs> it only um, flows differently when it's more convenient for the plot. <laughs> yep. Ugh. Ultra space ball. Not an exclamation Pokemon. Exclamation Poke catch. Oh, yeah. Try to get the Zorua. Oh, wait, you never started. I remember Koneko. Sorry. Um, due to the rebels continued disturbances, I've decided to install a coded access system into all of the domes. I guess he thinks the rebels are too dumb to learn how to read Denis numbers, even though he literally teaches them in a school. So he's just going to write them down. Okay, let's see what those numbers are. Now this you cannot memorize this. It's randomly generated for each and every playthrough. But remember, we know how to count all the way to 25. Now, from that game that you play, you can really only learn the exact symbols for 1 to 10. And you have to kind of extrapolate how the rotation works to um, count all the way to 25. But the game does expect you to figure that out. It does expect you to understand that because, like, 6 is a cross like this, it's like a, a line down and a line across, that you're rotating one plus adding one onto it. It does expect you to figure that out. Okay, so let's see what we've got here for our code. So that is a four and a six and then a seven. And then let's see, that is a 13. And then the last one is 17. So we've got four, six, seven, thirteen, seventeen. Is the ocean soup? I don't know. Could someone drink it? Could we actually all drink the ocean? <laughs> okay, so there we go. There's our code. We're going to use that later. I caught one of my assistants looking over this journal today. I'm glad I've chosen to write it in a language they cannot decipher. Okay, so they don't know English. So that's good. Um, Note, discuss security with each guild master. No problem expected from the maintainers, maintainers, I'm not sure, educators and surveyors. Question the bookmakers and builders more closely. Hmm. Today, I heard several more reports of spirit sightings by some of the villagers. It seems that under Catherine's leadership, the rebels, or the Black Moiety, that's what they're called, um, as the villagers ostensibly insist on referring to them, have attained a new level of sophistication in their terror tactics and have renewed their campaign to intimidate the villagers into joining them, preying upon their shared superstitions. The villagers have certainly been susceptible to this form of coercion, especially given of late the rebels' increasing acts of vandalism and theft. Okay. Now, what does this mean? All of those balls that we've been finding with the numbers and the sounds... The rebels put them there. The rebels are trying to communicate through those. The tram traps have been steadily fruitful this year. Apparently, the breakup of the islands has not adversely affected the subterranean ecosystem. Unfortunately, I imagine the rebels are experiencing a similar generous harvest. No shortage of poison for their darts this season. The frogs are poisonous. Such morbid issues aside, the sudden availability has allowed me to refine a particularly pleasant extract from my pipe. Apparently, it's also, you know, good to smoke. One that is smoother than any of the others from recent years. All right, very nice. Chemical analysis of one of the rebels' knives has yielded curious results. 
Its composition contains elements that are unlike anything I've encountered on the islands. It appears they have access to a resource of which I'm unaware. Perhaps a mine or an uncharted island? Okay, remember that knife from the beginning? The rebel helped us escape and has been leading us around because we've been looking at these knives in several spots. Some types of poison dart frogs are in fact hallucinogenic. Well, apparently the ones on Riven are some of those types. Um, note, most of the knives have been found on the south side of the village. This is the same area in which there have been reports of people mysteriously disappearing. I think a closer inspection of this area is warranted. The fact that they leave these distinctive knives as a sign of their presence concerns me. They're growing more bold and seem to no longer fear discovery of their hideout. The latest measurement indicates a recent trend has continued. The movement of the islands has slowed tremendously. My previous estimates predicted a total collapse in approximately three months, but with the new figures, I'm uncertain. I have merely finished writing the, this would be the um, 99th age, and I have every faith that it will be indeed a safe place for us to relocate. Yet it would be helpful to know what has caused the halt in this age's breakup. Is it possible that it's stable at all? If so, I must discover how this age differs from my successful attempts. My examination of the 223rd age has far proven inconclusive. Okay, so basically what he's saying there is um, he's noticing that everything is not breaking apart anymore. The island is kind of stabilizing. Remember, Atris did a lot of writing in Riven to stop it from breaking apart. Um, so he's noticing that. Again, is noticing that. Or perhaps someone is repairing the damage to the Fifth Age. If so, it would be almost certainly be Atris is doing. Yes, Atris told us he's doing that. I have reluctantly decided to abandon my experiment into the behavior of the water of this age as there is more pressing matters on which I must now concentrate, leaving me little time for such specul speculative research. For future reference, however, my investigation up to this point have returned the following. I believe the remarkable properties of the water is to be caused by a life form which resides in it, specifically a type of bacteria. I'm imagining a motile unicellular organism, but one with structures capable of holding bits of water, whose combined effect via surface tension or a stronger force causes the composite body of the water to move in response to heat. So remember, there was spots where the water was like gone, but it was just, there was nothing. It was just air, right? There are these little organisms doing that. If you warm them up, they will push the water away. And there's lots of them living in the water. Prolonged exposure to extreme heat, for example, a period of extended boiling seems to kill the bacteria, which would explain its dramatic aversion to heat sources. Unfortunately, these theories are still not fully tested, and I remain ignorant of both its deeper nature and its possible uses. Well, lucky for you, we don't care beyond that. An exciting development. Last night, a squad of maintainers stumbled upon a lone rebel scout and obtained from him the most incredible device. It is a crystal that somehow powers these flawed linking books, much like my own system does, but with an obvious advantage. It's small and weighs only a few pounds, making it completely portable. Catherine must have fabricated the device before I captured her. Obviously, with an explicit Denis schematic, she must have brought with her to this age. If only I had access to such a document all these years. Regardless, I can now concentrate solely on the writing of ages and need no longer worry about building elaborate power supplies for each new book I write. This is a sobering reminder, however, that I must continue to seek an avenue to Denis. Regaining access to the resources there may be crucial to the completion of my mission. Okay, the end. Poison dart frogs in captivity are not poisonous. How does that happen? Is it just certain kinds that people take and they leave the others? Or something about ca captivity? Okay, so the other interesting thing on this desk is over here. Let's read what this says. Last week, while monitoring the situation of the villagers from the scope in my survey room, I observed one of the natives swim out to a small object that appeared to be floating, but anchored near the entrance to the bay. Okay, so at the entrance to the bay, he found find this. I ordered the object removed from the water for inspection. Several days later, however, I was surprised to see another floating there. The missing object had apparently been quite mysterious, but replaced with a new one overnight. I have long been aware of the existence of similar artifacts on the villagers' island, but have paid them little notice until now. Tomorrow, I'll send surveyors to catalog the others. Okay, let's go look at it. Oh, one. Oh, greetings, um, Re Copo Records. New York... I am also on the East Coast. How is New York right now? 
Yes, I am in the Carolinas. Okay, so we now know one. Okay, so we don't know the um, animal that goes with one, but we know one, two, three, four, five. And we know that the animal, there's a clue about this animal somewhere by the bay. So down by the bay where the watermelon grows is where he found this particular little ball thingy. Jane, welcome in, welcome in. You're hot. I <laughs> uh, don't have a Carolina accent. Well, my friend, I promise you I am Southern. Um, but you're right, I don't have much of an accent. Uh, next week I'll actually be in a different time zone. Really? What times? Are you doing something fun, Koneko? Um, it's more about them not eating the things they need in order to de develop the poison. Oh, it's their diet. Okay. All right. So now what we need to do is come and push this button right here. That's going to make the duo rail come. And um, we're going to go out this other door over here. Oh, Records, I love this game. I love this game so much. Um, big, big fan of Myst. Uh, I hated this game as a kid because, like, it was hard. But once I finally understood it and was able to beat it, um, this game became a very special place in my heart. Okay, so now the duo rail is here. And we are going to take this to our next little area. Pufferfish. Yeah, fugu. Um, pufferfish in captivity don't feed on the platinum that helps them produce the petro detoxin. You guys know a lot about poisons. Remind me not to ever upset you. Okay, it's time, you guys. Hands up. Roller coaster. Ooh. Short one. Abduction. I haven't played that, Records. Oh, that's okay. We can use dancing emotes. Oh, wait. Oh, you have the one pop. Oh, that's right, because you, you don't have subscription anymore right now. I'm so sorry, Koneko. Maybe somebody will kindly gift you one. Okay, so we took the duo rail. I'm just looking at my notes to make sure that I go to the right place. Okay, we have to go through this door. This game is super cool, Jane. It's super cool. I freaking love it. Okay, we go up here. Ooh, what is this? This is the most beautiful spot in this game. And this whole long pathway, it's literally just here to look at scenery. Like, just like, look at how gorgeous this water is. It's freaking beautiful. Oh my god. You've got all these little, like, bugs flying around. You've got these amazing, like, stones coming out. It's just, like, like, just freaking look at this. It's amazing. It's amazing. What? What the heck? And you hear all these lovely little sounds? Okay. Okay. And it's got this really blue water up here. It's just like, it's just freaking gorgeous. I love this little spot. Okay, so we're going to take this elevator up. Oh, that sounds like a really fun hobby, other Karen. I love that. Okay, so we're going to come out here and look at this. <gasps> Doesn't this look familiar? Doesn't this look familiar? Oh my god, you guys. It's this. It's this. Okay. Oh, it's all coming together. All right. Now, let's start with the small one. Okay. So we can see the water bubbled up. Remember, we learned from Gen's journal that um, the way that the, the water works here, there's all this bacteria in it, which has these interesting reactions to heat. So the water bubbles up. Okay, now we turn around and we go into here. And there's this. Let's click on it. Okay, 
Now, you can use this to rotate it around. And what we're looking for on each of these is the dome placement, okay? Now you can see this is a grid. So let's turn it back around the way that it was originally facing. Okay, so you can see this is a grid. And remember, that fire marble puzzle was grids upon grids upon grids, okay? So I'm just gonna draw a little dot. So that dot is in like the two position, all right? So it's like you can see one, two, three, four, okay? Five, yeah, one, two, three, four, five across, and it's right there, okay? So we draw a little, we draw a little dot. Vanishing of Ethan Carter. I'm not familiar with that one, maybe I should. Okay, let's do the next one. All right, let's do this guy. And now that's gonna go down. And the other one's going to go up. What type of game is it, um, records? Is it like a puzzle game like this? Is it adventure, action? Like, what is it? If it's scary, I can't do it. I, I've tried to play scary games and I just, I just have to quit because I'm a chicken. Okay, so this one you can see, here's the shape of the island. This one's yellow, so that's a clue. We don't really care about these. We want to look at the yellow one. All right, and we're kind of blocked. All right, so this, is probably Temple Island. So it's got this big ass dome. All right. So let's turn it around. Let's see if we can see the dome. It should be here. But the resolution of this game is pretty low. Let me check something. I have, I have another spot where I've got a few notes that I just want to peek at. Maybe I'm looking in the wrong spot because I don't see it and I don't think this is right when I look at my notes. Let's look at this next one. Haha, -ha, there's our dome. Okay, there's our dome. Yeah, it's really hard to it's really hard to see. Okay, so there's our dome right there. It's on the second block in this kind of like one 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 position. Okay, so I'm adding that to our notes. All right, so that's the location for that one. Let's look at the next one. So each of these, as you can tell, is the different islands. Um, so there's five different islands of Ribbon that Ribbon has been broken up into. And um, we are locating the dome on each of these, okay? The dome is very important. It's got a book inside of it, remember? And remember the fire marble puzzle excuse me, is a way to create power. It is not easy <laughs> to make all of these connections and put them together if you don't already know. Hence why so many people played this game back when it came out and could not at all beat it. Okay, let's... Now, on this island, this is Crater Island, so if we click on each of these, you'll just see it's got a massive freaking crater in the middle. We've been here. Remember, it has, like, the steam power thing in the middle of it. Okay. Crater Island does not have a dome. Instead, it has this anomaly right here. Um, it's just kind of... It's ha kind of how it is, okay? Uh, it has this little... This little anomaly. It's a crater on Crater Island. It has no dome. Okay. Because remember, when we were on Crater Island, the dome was underground. It was not above ground. It was underground. We had to close the door to get to it. Okay. So we're writing all of these down. Next one. Jane, I feel like you, um, uh, you genuinely would have loved these games if you'd played them when they came out. Did you play them when they came out back in like 90s early 2000s and stuff I feel like you would have been a huge missed fan back at that time if you had played them
you go to the Doom on Crater Island, you can just look up and see the sky, letting you know that it's a hole. I only learned what I have literally never looked up. Also, welcome. Thank you so much. See, I've played this game so many times and I learn new things and I still learning new things. Okay. What the heck? I had no idea you could look up on that screen. No freaking clue. Wowie wow wow. Oh my god. Okay. So on this one, you can see the dome is like in here, in this little kind of um, porthole kind of area. So we're going to write down where it is. Okay. Made my little dot for this one. I also never looked up. I saw a streamer do it the other day and was like, oh my God. I mean, my mind is literally blown right now. I like, I really want to go back to Crater Island and look up. I don't know if we're going to, but like the urges to like drop what I'm doing and go back to Crater Island and just look up is so strong right now. <laughs> um, how do you say your name, by the way? Um, Nemoticist? Nemoticist, is that right? Am I doing it right? Tell me how close I am. Pneumaticist. Okay, I was close. Pneumaticist. Got it. I will do my best to remember that, um, new friend pneumaticist, fellow mist lover. Oh yeah, like pneumatic. Okay, so this is the big island, and um, I'm pretty sure it is right here where it starts you out, or close to that. I know. I think it's on this little leg. Oh, where the heck are you, Mr. Dome? It's so hard to see. The resolution is... Oh, there it is. It's on this one. Okay. So it's in that spot right there. Okay. So now we've got our little drawing with all of our little notes and where all of the little balls go. Okay. Now, we still cannot solve the fire marble puzzle, even though this is obviously where the balls go in the fire marble puzzle, now that I drew you the picture. But we don't know what colors they're supposed to be. Noom air, cis sack, airbag. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now there's another thing we need to do on this island. Let's go this way first. To the left, to the left. Everything we own in the box to the left. This one broke. Oh no. Sad. Sad. It broke. It broke. We gotta go look at it first. To figure out which thingy is gold. Because <laughs> we can't just look through the peeper. Okay. Let's go back the other way. So I guess Gen is unhappy, so let's see if we can see it. Okay, this is the one with the line all the way across. Okay. <clears throat> and I bet you when we stop this, I just like to mash on it until it stops. When we go back, it's going to be the same thing, where it's a book with a little code thingy. Oh, look, it's another book with a code thingy. Okay. We're not worried about that right now. Let's go back. Oh, we need to go down. Elevator. There we go. <clears throat> so this island is very short, but very beautiful. Much like I like to think of myself. So there we go. You can see the water when you come down here, how it's bubbled up. Like very freaking cool. Very freaking cool. Also, we're just going to listen to the music for a second. Wow. 
So cool. Okay. Back to the duo rail. Okay. Now we're not actually going to ride it back. All we're going to do is spin it around. Spin it right round, baby. Right round like a record, baby. The music of the plan underwater tunnel in the tree. Yes. 100%. 100%. <clears throat> Okay. Now we're not going to leave. Instead, we're going to just go out the door and we're trying to look at the other side. Okay. So we just spun around and we're going to go through this door now. And we are underneath the island. So this is called Survey Island, by the way. And we're going to pull this lever. And this is beautifully animated for, I don't know why. Um, but it's like the chains go down into the water. There's like a couple of like really amazingly animated movies on this island. I don't know, just this, everything about this, this particular island is like so extra beautiful. Like, just look at that. How shiny. Very beautiful, very powerful. Now we're going to ride the elevator down. Yeah. Exactly. Now we go into the water. Into the water. <clears throat> down here. Oh, long windy path. <gasps> A person. Where did they go? Where did they go, you guys? What? <gasps> oh no, they're taking the duo rail. Uh-oh. We trap. Uh oh. Okay, well, I guess there's nothing to do but proceed. We go up the stairs. Okay, so do you guys remember when we got into that room at the beginning and we sat down in the creepy chair with the wire cage? And one of them was like that red temple, and we opened the door, and then the other one was like this blue area that we could really interact with? Here we are. It's the blue area. Let's sit in the chair. <laughs> okay. Koneko, you can sing the whole song. I would listen. Okay, so we're getting in the chair. We're going to push the button. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is do the left one. Now, this is called Survey Island because we're about to survey. Let's see what we can see. Okay, so let's turn it on, and we rotate. This looks like that bay area. Yeah, in the village, we remember. Oh, what's that look like? That looks like a fish. I bet since he found that ball with the one on it in the bay, the animal for that area is a fish. Fish say blub. Fish shadow. Okay, let's press this button. What does this button do? Okay, there's no rotation. Um, this is Catherine's room, by the way. Remember we read in Gen's journal just now? Uh, he has Catherine trapped. We're supposed to save her. This is her room. There she is. There is the lovely Catherine. Don't worry, Catherine, I'm coming. Atris told me to help again. Okay. 
Let's go back. Let's do the other one. Let's pull this up. One day I'll figure out how to record my voice and not cringe at it. I believe in you, Koneko. I believe in you. Okay, we're gonna flip the right switch. Okay, we've got some more fun things. All right. So we've got all these different eyeball symbols. Fabulous. Oh, is blue. Okay. So this eyeball that goes up and down like that is blue. Let's rotate. This eyeball that's just the dot is green. Okay. This eyeball that's like the dot inside like that is yellow. This eyeball that's the line through it is orange. Okay. This one that's like an eyeball with the line, oh, this is red. Oh, it's one of the whales. Hmm. Now, what body of water do we think this is? This is probably that bay, okay? Because remember, we saw that contraption that you can hoist the people up in, and then you can drop them down into the water, and we know the villagers are scared of this Mr. Whale, all right? So, Gen calls the whale to eat the villagers, om nom. Oop, uh, resume. There's a fun thing that happens if you call the whale a bunch of times. So let's call the whale a bunch of times and piss him off. We're gonna call him and we're not gonna deliver a villager for him to om nom eat. Um, let's see what he does to us. <laughs> Jane, everything with me is Final Fantasy vibes, I hope. Okay, no human for you, sorry. Let's do it again. I think you have to do it four times. <laughs> the Finneon wanted to meet his big whale friend. See, he ignoring me now. He's like, I know there ain't no person there for me to eat. You're just calling me to be annoying. Oh, he's so anger. So anger. I'm sorry, whale. I'm just a cat girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. He mad. <laughs> That's all the little whale scenes. Okay. Last one. Let's see what color this is. Oh, this is broken. But there was only one other color on the fire marble puzzle. Purple. Okay. Yay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just looking at my notes real quick to make sure. All right. <clears throat> now, if we, let's see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. We can put this back away. All right. Now we know all the colors and we can solve the fire marble puzzle. So if you remember, each of those eyes that we saw... Okay, can, how do we get out? Oh, we have to push the button. Each of those domes has a different eyeball, right? Each of those domes has a different eyeball. So each of those eyeballs matches to a particular island that we found it on. And now we know what each of the islands, the eyeballs colors are, and therefore what each of the islands colors are. Let's see if the duo rail is returned. Do we have to call it back? Yeah, I guess we call it back. I guess he's done with it, we can call it back. So that man escaped. Okay, so 
The only eyeball that didn't show up for us was the one associated with yellow. The ones that did sh do show up are red, orange, green, blue, and, and we can guess that that light that was broken was a purple light. Okay. So, now we can do the fire marble puzzle. We have to ride the duo rail back. It's okay, Riri. She did stop crying, so I think she's okay. But she does still seem a little bit uncomfy. Roller coaster time! I'm not gonna say the T word, but I think she's been such a good trooper hanging out with me this whole time. And only, and not doing too much craziness, she can have a T word um, after the stream. Okay, so now we get back out of here, um, and we have to go to the upper part of the gold dome. So we're gonna take this up. I think I just follow this back. I did not take any notes on how to get back. I just said, go go back to the fire marble puzzle. <laughs> so let's see if I can figure out how to get back. <laughs> Oops. I don't think this is right. I think it's the other way. Yeah, I think I go this way. Okay, it's not to the mine cart. I think it's, is it up here? What's this way? Oh no, not this way. Imagine if this was like all 3D and trying to traverse around here. Hi, Sunners. How are you? Angry that I jumped in on you. Okay. Do you hear maybe? That's that same... Oh shoot, how do I get back? This isn't right. I know that I can get back from here. Is it this way? Mm. That's where I just was, right? Oh gosh, <laughs> sorry guys. I don't know how to navigate. Okay, sunners go away. Oh, I thought it was playing a cutscene, so I hit resume or hit uh, escape. Okay, this is a dead end. I remember this. So this isn't right. Which way am I supposed to go to get back to Temple Island? I cannot remember. Maybe it is through this, and I'm just being silly. No, because this is another duo rail. Well, let's see where this duo rail takes us. We won't play all the cutscenes because we've already seen them all. Where does this go? Oh, this is back to the temple. Maybe I can go this way?
there's got to be a faster way to do this, and I just don't remember. Oop, resume. There's the gold dome. Aha, and here's the beetle room. Okay, so if we go... Okay, maybe that was the best way. Anyway. Gold dome. Okay. Back to the fire marble puzzle. We made it, you guys. Okay. So, we've got all of our little dots. We know um, which color goes in which one. Okay. So... Let's solve the fire marble puzzle. So blue goes in this one here. If I'm looking at my notes right, green goes in this one here. Purple goes in this one here. Orange goes in this one right here. And red goes in this one right here. Please cross your fingers, everybody for me. Send me good luck vibes. I think this is right. We're going to go find out. Let's see if we get the chunk sound. Do it? I think that did it. I'm just making a few more notes. I don't feel like I just wanted to check one more time being maniacal, but now I'm kind of like questioning, did I put the right colors in? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, no, that was right. That sound was the right sound. I guess because I didn't ever do it wrong this playthrough. I haven't heard the wrong sound. I don't know. Anyway. Fire marble puzzle solved. That is a major puzzle in this game. All right. So now um, we need to solve the animal puzzle. So we're going to go back to the jungle island. Um, but first, let me just look at my notes. I think there's something I want to do first. Okay. Now we want to rotate the beetle room. One time. Two times. Three times. And then we want to go out to this dome here. Is that? That's not how you get to it. How the heck do you get to this dome? I gotta remember. Do I need to put this back? I guess I don't need this up anymore. It can go back down. Yeah, and that, if you do not put together all the different eyeballs on each of the islands with their different colors, like, you can't solve that puzzle. It is so, so much. Okay. I'm trying to remember how to get out to that dome. Why didn't I take better notes towards the end, guys? Use the elevator platform on the bottom walkway. Oh my god, thank you so much and welcome. Welcome into the stream, um, Cavern Lore. Happy to have you here. We do a lot of fun chill games like this. Why didn't I write use the elevator? Why did I think I would remember that? Silly. Okay, so now we can get out 
to this gold dome. All right. And we can use the sequence that we learned from Gen's journal. Okay. So remember, ours is 4, 6, 7, 13, 17. Okay. So this is 25 ticks. So I think this should be 20. Um, 19, 18. Should be 19, 18, 17. Okay. Um, 15, 14, 13. Okay. Um, 9, 8. This should be 7. Okay. And then 6 right next to it. And then 4 right here. Okay. Hopefully, I know how to count. I know how to count, you guys. Yes! Okay. Now... We can get into the 233rd age. Let's go. What's gonna happen? Why is it not working? What did I miss? Uh-oh. It's just darkness. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I guess I did not do the fire marble puzzle correctly like I thought I did. Okay, it doesn't have power. It doesn't have power. I did the fire marbles wrong. Oh no. That's okay. We can figure this out. figure this out because I have Google Gamer. I have Google Gamer. What did I mess up? Tell me, Google. You are my only hope. Oh no, don't don't play a video. No, 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 no. I just want a picture. I just want a picture. Don't play a video, please. Okay. Um, what did I do wrong? What did- I oh, I rotate it. I see what I did wrong. I see what I did wrong. <laughs> Let's go back. Oh, don't call the elevator yet. You're not on it. Okay. Let's go back. Let's go back to the fire marbles. I have to put the stairs up again. Is it here? Yes. Okay, put the stairs back up. Let's go back to the beetle room. One, two, okay. I didn't think I heard the ka sound, but then I was like, I don't know, maybe I did, but I didn't hear it. <clears throat> okay, let's try this again. Um, do, 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 this is right, this is right. Well, according to Google Gamer, this is right. What the heck and heck am I doing wrong? What did I do wrong, you guys? People smarter than me. Help. That goes there, that goes there. It is orange and you skip over yellow. What am I missing? What am I missing? Maybe I have to keep those stairs up. Maybe it's because I put the stairs down. There's a button under the lever you gotta press. This guy? My savior. My savior, Cavern Lore. Thank you so much. Bless you, darling. <laughs> Do you stream? We can shout you out, sir. Tell me if you stream. <laughs> Help my dumb ass. 
<laughs> that only knows this game because I played it a zillion times. Okay, and took copious notes. All right, so anyway, let's return. Okay, back to the catwalk. Do my little turn on the catwalk. Okay. Oh, resume. Anyway, let's do that again. Let's do that again. Gen gen. Gen gen gang gang. Okay. 2019, 18, 17. 14, 13. Let's see. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and 4. Okay. Let's try this again. It got power now. Fuck yeah. What, lady? Eat your kibble. You can see the duplicated mountains. Let's go. Oh, what is this? This is the drawing we saw in his book of his other lab. Let's go inside. I think we, we watched the, there we go. Okay. What is going on here? Oh, he's in jail again. You guys. We trapped. Uh oh. Those double mountains give me maintain Minecraft terrain generation vibes true. Oh, who dat? The ocean is acidic. Oh, I bet that's in the books. I don't remember that, but I bet it's in there. Sup, Gin? I'm not Atris. I apologize for the cage. You shouldn't. I'm afraid this situation has often required of me a more primitive code of conduct than I might otherwise have chosen. I am This Gen. dude. Yeah, we know. Heard of me. Have. Yes. Well, I suspect you have acquired some false information of who I am now. Look at this ridiculous colonizer Why vibe trying me? to, like, lie no, about himself. It's just that, well, I'm sure he believes me to still be the depraved father I once was. You still are? Yes. I even tried to kill him once. God, mm. if I had accomplished that, who knows what I would have become great father indeed who tries to murder his own son thankfully he trapped me on age five a prison of my own creation no books no precious inks he calls riven age no five ages to link to nothing but my own foolish ambitions that was 30 years ago 30 years 30 lifetimes what does it matter no sentence could be too harsh for the man I was. But I have changed. No one be believes sure, you. The deeds of my past can never be completely atoned for. But my mission was an honorable one. I'm sorry, this is all a bit awkward. I. It's been a long time since I've attempted to persuade anyone of my intentions. Most of the people here have already made their minds up about me one way or another. I myself do not trust the words of most men, so I don't expect you to believe me. I don't. In the end, though, you may discover that I do have more than mere words to offer. Smoke your frog, sir. 
Beatrice's choice of punishment has been hard on the people of Riven, and many have suffered because of it. The island has been steadily decaying for years, but according to my most recent measurements, it appears that the Fifth Age has entered its final days. Unless the villagers can be relocated soon, the island will collapse entirely and everyone will perish. It has taken me a long time to do it, but it appears that finally I'll be able to make some substantial amends to my past transgressions, especially in... Well... I'm afraid I've had some trouble with Catherine and the moiety. Maybe she don't like being a prisoner. I'm not really enjoying society, this right now. There will always be a small percentage of the population with rebellious tendencies. Before Catherine appeared, the moiety, as they call themselves, had been relatively harmless. I mean, the natives here are a fairly violent people by nature, but I'd almost come to accept their presence. It seemed inevitable under the circumstances. Upon Catherine's return, however, their violence intensified considerably. Again, that's racist. It seems she's become some sort of religious savior to them. Don't you wish you were? As far as I can tell, she's come to believe this herself. So I've had no alternative. Jelly, he jelly. I had to separate her from her people. I must admit, though, that my concerns were not entirely for her safety alone. The actions of Catherine and the moiety have put my own life at risk on numerous occasions. Consequently, the lives of all the people here. I'm so bored of this. Therefore, I'm just going to play I on my phone. Therefore, I must to refrain <laughs> from any attempt yeah, to free her. And you can stop at any point. Although I'm sure Atrus desires it. Indeed, he must desire it with all his heart. But he is completely unaware of her recent state. Mm. I know that you arrived in the Fifth Age with a book which was immediately stolen from you. Needless to say, its reacquisition is of interest to me, though my personal history with the moiety does not give me much hope for it. Still, there is a chance you might somehow manage to retrieve it. If you do, I would ask for the safety of all concerned that you bring it to me at your earliest opportunity. Mm. Again, to be honest, my reasons here are partly selfish. There is so much yet to be resolved between Atris and myself, especially in light of what has become of Catherine. In any case, my immediate concern is the completion of the sanctuary I've long promised to all the islanders. In the meantime, as a token of my good intentions, I will allow you free access to my linking books. Oh. Proof, How kind of you. Be, and to the rest of the fifth age. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> As for the stolen linking book, we should probably not meet again until you've recovered it. I will know if you succeeded, and will await your return. Good luck with your search. I hope to see you back here shortly. Sure. Bye. Um, cavern lore. Oh, yes, yes. I think a lot of people do the animal puzzle and then the fire marble puzzle. But I wanted to do it this way to show off this cutscene. Because it just, it really like solidifies everything we just read in Gen's journal. It brings back together everything that we have read. We read in Atris's journal, you know, so it's like kind of, this is a great way to like put it all together, this scene is. Okay, now we have at least 20, probably more like 30, 40 minutes of this game left. And there is only five more minutes in stream. <laughs> so we are actually going to save right here. Let's save. 
we're going to save, um, let's save in slot three, stream two, save. Okay. And there we go. That's what we're going to play for today. Uh, yes. Okay. All right, you guys. So next time on Artistic License, please come back to the theater, 630 Eastern. We will be finishing Ribbon. I know we will definitely finish it next stream. Um, once we're done with Ribbon, we'll probably go do some more Final Fantasy X um, battles uh, with the... Um, when the optional bosses will be moved on to original creations at that point. So we got some, we got some tough ones coming up. It's going to be big fun. Um, I, I, we got so many new friends that came in and chatted today. So I really, really appreciate you guys coming. Um, just to kind of let you know a little bit about my stream. I am a variety streamer on Thursday evenings. I stream and we play, uh, games, uh, that are single player. Typically I really focus on games with good stories. I want to see like world building, lore, fantastic characters, um, a good plot, things like that. Uh, this is uh, called Artistic License. I also have a stream on Saturday called Interstage Window. That stream is uh, is more of like uh, with my friends. So a lot of times we do a podcast on there with my friend Landon. Like right now we are doing media analysis of um, Sailor Moon Crystal. So we're going to be talking about Sailor Moon Crystal season two on Saturday. Uh, we also, that's also when we do our community game. So anytime that we're playing a game together, we'll do it on, on Saturdays. Um, oh, we got to catch that last Pokemon of the stream. There we go. Um, so that's how my stream works. All of my socials are here. In addition to, of course, following the Twitch, if you want to make sure that you get um, your notifications uh, properly, then you want to get in my Discord because I actually can control those notifications, so you'll be sure to get them. Um, unlike Twitch, which I know likes to be picky, YouTube does the same thing. I also post all my VODs to YouTube, so if you want to go back and watch part one, you can do so on my YouTube channel. My main social media is Twitter, so um, that's where all the latest updates are, important things, uh, and uh, and shit posting and all that fun stuff go there. Let's find someone to raid. Who is live right now? Let's find out. Mm -mm -mm. I feel like the people that are live right now are people that we've been raiding a lot recently. Let's see. What's the off chance that like anyone else is playing Riven? Definitely not. I'm probably the only person. Yes, I'm the only person streaming Riven. <laughs> Let's go see if anyone is streaming um, Mist. We'll make a new friend. We'll make a new friend and see if they're streaming Mist. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, let's see. Mm. Someone is streaming Masterpiece Edition? Oh, their stream is labeled 18 plus English slash Japanese. Oh, this is a uh, VTuber. Oh, but they are playing, or they are playing Masterpiece Edition because it's the point and click one. It's not the newest one. Um, that's all 3D and stuff. Okay, let's go right into them. Um, I don't know how much they talk in English versus Japanese. Um, but this might be fun. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, wait a second. They're not going to talk. I see they're down in their description. They're not going to talk. Um, let's find someone else to raid. We'll find somebody. We'll find somebody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's see if they're talking. This is another VTuber. Guess what they're playing? They're playing the Sailor Moon Another Story. I thought that might be funny, but this person's not talking. Okay, I don't want to raid into like a crap stream where the person's not really interacting. I don't think that's right, you know? Um, let's just go to my recommendeds. Oh, well, I know what we'll do. We'll go find a Final Fantasy X. 
We'll go find a Final Fantasy X stream to raid into. Oh my god, no cam. Why? I'm not going to let y'all go into a crap stream. I promise, I promise. Oh, here's somebody on the finale. And I see a cam. Let's see if she's interacting. Oh yeah, she's interacting. Okay, here we go. This is who we're going to raid. Her name's Strawberry Girl Kyrie. If I could type. Okay, there we go. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Um, I had so much fun playing Riven with you. We're going to beat it next time. We're going to see all the stuff. Um, so I will see you all then. And of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day.